That's why you're here today. So you got to stay focused on God's word. Talking to you and what you're talking about, you sound like we're going to call you Reverend Brown pretty soon. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you for watching Reflections. I am your host, Veronica Brown. In the next 30 minutes, I will take you on a journey back in time. In short, easy to understand episodes, we will explore events from the Holy Scriptures and other inspirational sources. You will be introduced to characters that are way beyond your wildest imagination. So sit back, relax. Fasten your seatbelt and enjoy the journey. Before we get started with today's program, please join me in today's salvation prayer. Dear God, I am a sinner. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and I am sorry. I believe that Lashua died in my place, and by his blood you remember my sins no more. Now that I am clean, I ask Lashua to be my Lord. Messiah Lashua, come and live inside of me. And in Lashua's name, I ask you to fill me from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes with your Holy Spirit and with your power. In the name of Jesus, Lashua the Messiah. Amen. Today, I would like to speak to you about the keys to the kingdom. A question came in from one of my viewers. Why do you say the salvation prayer before the program? Why is that? So let me respond to your question. The reasons why I say the salvation prayer, and many of us faith-based programs say the salvation prayer, is because each one of us, is responsible for a soul, to bring souls into the heavenly kingdom. The first step for me is the salvation prayer. The salvation prayer commemorates that you, as an individual, believe that God was, is, and will be forevermore. We believe that he sent his son down here to show us exactly how he wanted us to live our lives. He preached, he talked, he performed miracles by raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, making the lame walk, the dumb begin to talk, and healing of leprosy and all other diseases. So this is the first step for me, that of course everyone is responsible for a soul. When you bring a soul into the kingdom of heaven, they believe that Jesus exists. You are wise, the scripture says. So throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, you're bringing people into the belief of God, as well as his son, our savior, Lord Jesus Christ. This is why I say the salvation prayer. That's the first step. The second key, however you want to do it in no particular order, is to be baptized. That was my order. I believed first, and then I understood that Jesus was God's son. And I understood that he came, he died for all of our sins and sickness and diseases. He came down here to save each one of us and to protect us. To his, I believe all of those things that he said he would do. I believed it in my heart and my mind. 
So the next step I took, I was baptized because I believed in everything I heard and know about him. Hearing by faith and not by sight. So I was baptized as well as all of my siblings was baptized. My parents made sure we was all baptized. We were baptized in the name of Jesus. And then my next step to the kingdom was the day after Passover. Everybody have a story, but this is my particular story. The day after Passover, it was on a Monday night. I joined my sister at her church Bible class. And this Bible class took place in one of the members' home. And the, I guess the membership be became so large, she had to move the class into their basement. Elderly was teaching the class, the Bible class, on the Monday night. I'll never, ever forget. Many of my siblings were there, but my mother was outside of the house. She decided not to come in, the, and she stayed in the car to do whatever she was doing throughout the Bible class. And at the end of the Bible class that night, Elder Lee called me to the front, picked me out, out of the whole, all the people that was there, and said, you daughter, you come to the front, and asked me to come to the front. He said, the Lord have a word for you. He said, tonight, you will meet the Holy Spirit. And he began to tell me about the things I have done, why God has put me down here, why I am here. And one of the things he said to me, that I was a drawing card. I was one of his drawing cards. I was a jewel. He had things for me to do, the things I already have done already, but I have so much more to do. He said, and people was gonna like you or they're gonna hate you. He told me not to worry about that. God telling me to tell you not to worry about that because he'll always be by my side. And I was just so surprised. But he said, I want you to, he said, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to say the blood, 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 and kept keep repeating that. And as I repeated that, I felt very light. My whole body began to be light. And he was praying along with me and just repeating the blood, the blood, the come on, Holy Spirit, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood, the blood, the blood. And as it came, I felt so light. And from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And then I felt like everything was, was I, I felt warm. And then I felt light, warm and light. And then he said, now when he's in that cup, I just start speaking. And the more I said the blood, I began to speak in tongue. And I spoke in tongue. And I believe I just began to speak the tongue, speak in tongue, and speak in tongue. And that was my experience with the Holy Spirit. Been washed in the blood and washed with the Spirit. And this is why I said a salvation prayer. You cannot get into the kingdom but through the His Son, Jesus Christ. So when you repeat after me of the salvation prayer, you ask the Lord to come into your life and live your life in you. You become a changed person. You don't do the same things you used to do. You don't say the same things that you used to say. You don't even go to the same places you used to go. Your life is about a change. Because God is always about a change. And this is why I say the salvation prayer. I want you to come into the fold. Believe in of Christ. Believe that he lived. Died for the redemption of our sins. Remember the two guys that was on the side of Christ when he was crucified? One was a murderer or, or, and one was a thief or that both were the murderers or whatever they was. One of them on the left side said to him, why are you up here on the cross? If you're the son of God, why don't you get down off this cross and take us with you as you do it? And I'm paraphrasing. And then the other guy on the right hand side of Jesus said to the guy, Basically, again, I'm paraphrasing. He said, shut up. Don't talk to him that way. We have done things wrong. We deserve to be up here. But this man has done nothing wrong. He has no reason to be up here. But he had no idea that God had already had a plan for Jesus, for the salvation of mankind. So he turned, the man on the right turned to Jesus and said, Savior, Father, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, I will remember you in paradise. I will see you in paradise. And that let me know that this murderer 
was accepted by Christ, our Savior. He believed that Jesus was our Savior. He believed in all the things that Jesus had said and done down here on this earth. And this is why I say to Salvation Prayer, I need you to join me into the kingdom of God through our salvation prayer, through being baptized in the name of Jesus, and through being baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's why you have to do want to join a church, a scripture-based church, because every church and every person that says Jesus, Jesus, holy, holy, is not going to be up in our heavenly kingdom. You have churches out there that you give funds to for building funds. You never see the new building built. But yet they call themselves a church. There's so many things that's taking place in churches. You know, people change. You have to change. I know it takes time longer for others. But there's a lot of change that have to take place in your lives. You know, you have to show yourself approval. You got to get into his word. Not just on a Sunday and on a Saturday. On the Sabbath. You got to get into it every day. You make time for it. You have to be what? Born again. Welcome. I'm Veronica Brown, and you're watching Reflections. Watch Reflections with Veronica Brown on the Now Network every Saturday morning, 12 a.m. Eastern. You have to be what? Born again. Being born again. For three days after I left that Bible class, I did not feel the ground as I walked. When I went to my job, it seemed like I was walking on a cloud for three days after I received the Holy Spirit. For three days, I told my mother when I went outside, Mom, I feel so light. I feel so different. She said, mm-hmm. She just said, mm-hmm. For three days, my feet didn't feel like it was touching the ground. For that was my experience. I know everybody have a, their own experience. Because God is a good God. He's an individual God. He supplies your needs according to his riches and glory. You know, he abides in each and every one of our lives, but it's up to you to ask. He said, ask and shall be given, knock and the door shall be opened, see and ye shall find. And ask, it says, me and my household will serve the Lord. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Rabbi, he said, all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evident that God is with us in John 3 and 2. Repent of your sins. John the Baptist was known as the emerger. John 3 and 1. Nicodemus' conversation with Jesus started with his statement that one couldn't help but be impressed by the sign and wonders that Jesus performed. Jesus' answer was that the signs and wonders were not so important. The most important thing was the change in the person inner beings and that could only be described as a new birth. When Jesus said one must be born again, Nicodemus misunderstood him. Jesus meant that to be born again, you had to undergo such a radical change that it looked like a new birth. The process is not only a human achievement, but is brought about by the grace and the almightiness of God. This idea of rebirth runs throughout the entire New Testament. This is exactly what happened when a heathen became converted to Judaism. He became a new person in all respects, and therefore Jesus could assume that Nicodemus understood the concept. 
unless you be born of water and spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what does rebirth mean to us? It embraces a few important things. It concerns the kingdom of God that cannot be entered unless rebirth has taken place. The fact that we cannot be God's children without being born again and the idea of being children of God as well as having eternal life. The fact is that rebirth is an unavoidable prerequisite of becoming children of God. You know, Jesus died on Barabbas' cross, and Barabbas was free. Sinner, whoever and wherever you are, whatever burdens or guilt you bear, and however deep you may have fallen into sin, here at the Golgotha, all your debts are paid in full. Jesus' mediating blood reconciles you with God. Come to the cross in the middle. Complete salvation flows from it. There the weary traveler finds rest. There the guilty find forgiveness. There the enemy is reconciled with God. That is the cross of reconciliation and salvation. Let's look at for a moment at the cross on the left side of Jesus. This is the cross of warning. There hung a robber and a murderer. A shameful and godless life had come to its end. The savior of guilt, the redeemer of sinners hung next to him. If only this poor man had called out for Jesus' grace. He hung next to the almighty Savior and yet would not lose forever. A person can live close to an almighty and willing Savior, yet be lost forever. A rich source of grace may flow past you and you can still die without receiving it. You can live next door to the gates of paradise, yet never enter. The Lord so often says to us what he says to Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you won't let me. And that's in Luke 13, 34. Let us take heed of this serious warning from this cross. Father God, Keep me through the works of the Holy Spirit from ignoring your voice, calling me to conversation. By the cross, we know the gravity of sin, the greatness of God's love towards us. Hello, please join us every weekend to watch Reflections. Reflections is a series of short, inspirational messages presented by Veronica Brown. Her messages are uplifting stories that are inspired by Holy Scriptures. Visit her website, veronicablown.org, and follow her on social media. We hope to see you there. Bye! The Revelation 12 Woman A Woman of Focus Picture this woman. She was pregnant and alone and in pain as she anticipated the birth of her child. Suddenly, her worst enemy appeared. His breath was on her. She waited to devour the baby as soon as it appeared. How he hated her. He could have easily killed them both immediately, but no, he wanted her to see her child die. Now the woman represented Israel and the child represented Jesus Christ our Savior. In extreme peril, the woman delivered the boy. Before the enemy could snatch him, the child was swept up 
to God. Still weak from the birth, the woman rose to her feet and ran. With unstable hips and wobbly legs, she ran for her life. She spoke to no one. She never pleaded with the enemy, nor did she call for help. She ran, even without her baby, to the place God had prepared, and the devil followed. The devil followed. The devil followed. The, devil followed. the enemy represented the devil. Shame the devil. Michael and the angels fought the enemy, and he was hurled from heaven. Still, he tried to kill the woman. But God gave the woman the wings of an eagle to speed her escape. Then the serpent sprayed out water from the mouth, but the earth swallowed the flood, allowing the woman another escape. At this point, the devil defeated and still hating the woman, dedicated his life to killing her earthborn seed. Who was this woman? We do not know for sure, but she is obviously symbolic and her contributes are instructive. She was strong, courageous, clearly a soldier. A woman had been given specific instructions. She understood what she was to do. Once on her mission, she executed it without question or complaint. Her circumstances and her feelings were irrelevant. Help comes from unexpected places. Her success depended on her staying in action, no matter what. Timing was everything. The Revelation 12 woman was a woman of focus. Self-sacrifice was just the beginning of the contribution she made to life. She gave all she had. The enemy couldn't stop her. And heaven and earth moved on her behalf. She knew her help was in God and his plans were fulfilled. And this is by B. Hartfield. How focused are you on carrying out the mission of God? Use this woman's strength and determination to encourage you as you run your race. Read Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, Hebrews 12, 1 and 3, and Revelation 12. If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to. And that's in John 4 and 10. We live in an age of unprecedented knowledge. And according to experts, it doubles every five years. We know all about the earth and scrutinize out of space. Yet in many cases, there is unbelievable ignorance about the eternal salvation of our immortal souls. So many voices come to us, inviting, flattering, and challenging voices, causing chaos and confusion in our minds. But above all these voices, the voice of the man from Nazareth is heard. It is the voice of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, inviting us, come to me and I will give you water of life. There is no excuse for ignorance about Jesus Christ. There should be no confusion about his voice and no uncertainty about what he wants to say to us. The woman at the well was at a crisis in her life. She was ignorant about Jesus Christ. 
Who is this man? Woman of Samaria, if only you knew who he was and what he could do for you. Deep in our hearts, we all seek this knowledge of salvation that is in Jesus Christ. We look for certainty about everything, but often because we think there is still plenty of time, we propose surrendering ourselves to him. Children, this is eternal life that we know Jesus as Savior, and this is the eternal curse that we don't want to know about Jesus. We hear God speaking to us. We know it is God. We know that he is wrestling with us about our immortal souls, but we refuse to listen to him. As M. Lloyd-Jones said, everyone needs to be saved, however great, however famous they are. We are all sinners. We are all born in sin. We hear God speaking to us. We know it is God. We know that he is wrestling with us about our immortal souls, but we refuse to listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of today's journey. I hope you had an enjoyable trip. Please join me in our prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are and all that you've done in our lives. I thank you for the blessing that you restored upon each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, for going in the highways and byways, Father God, healing and blessing and protecting. I thank you, for Father God, for blessing the land of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, all the original Israelites, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, bless those that need you over there in Russia, over there in Ukraine, and all the surrounding other states around Ukraine. Father God, they need you as we need you. Our prayers go out to all the ones over there that's in need. And I'm thanking you for everything that you do. I thank you for the blood, the same blood that you gave, that you gave to your son that came down here and blessed us and gave us our salvation. It's the same blood that runs through us. I thank you for the temple that you've given each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, Lashua the Messiah. Amen. Until we meet again, may God hear you when you call. May God catch you if you fall. May God lift you as you stand. And may God hold you in the palm of his hand. May God bless you. You. Yes. Even you. Show your appreciation for Veronica Brown and her reflections with a small donation. Scan the QR code showing on your screen with your phone's camera now and donate $5 or more. Donations of $35 and higher are eligible for a free mug or t-shirt from a selection of Veronica Brown's merchandise.